Today we are going to talk about blood, which is not usually people's favorite topics, but I swear it's interesting. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about how blood is composed and what are the things that it is made of. So as you can see, this right here is pretty much blood. Blood is made out of three major components and then one very, very minor thing. So we have the plasma, the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and then in very small amounts, there's platelets as well. If you spin the blood very, very fast, you can get it to separate, which you can see in this second vial here. The red blood cells are the heaviest. They sink to the bottom. You can see there's quite a few of them. The white blood cells and the platelets kind of hang out in the middle. And the plasma, or the liquid portion, is the lightest, so it is on the top. Now, the plasma doesn't just contain liquid. It also contains dissolved salts, dissolved sugars, antibodies, proteins, all kinds of cool stuff, which is, of course, why it's not completely clear. To understand the components of blood, we look at a CBC, or a complete blood count. A complete blood count allows us to visualize the blood as if it was under a microscope. So we can't really see the plasma. That part is just white. It's around all the cells. But we can see the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. In fact, all these little pink circles are red blood cells. And you can see there's quite a lot of them. That's most of what you have. Then you have white blood cells. They are the bigger, whiter things, and they have purple staining in them. So even if you see a small purple thing, that's also a white blood cell. And finally, the platelets are these little things here. So a complete blood count examines a number of different factors, not just what you can see, but also how these cells are sort of made up. So some of the factors we'll be considering are how fat are these red blood cells, how much of the image is taken up by them, sort of what percentage are there. And we can actually even get a sense of how much hemoglobin is in them by how dark they are. With the white blood cells, we want to actually tell the difference between the different types of white blood cells. You can do that by looking at the different size and the different bits in the middle, and then platelets is just the number. So this is another image of what a red blood cell looks like under a, a scanning type microscope. They're really interesting little things, kind of like donuts. Inside of red blood cells is a molecule called hemoglobin that holds on to the oxygen. So hemoglobin is protein, so all these big, long, ribbony things are pieces of protein. There are four pieces of protein that come together. Two of them are very similar. They're the alpha chains. Two of them are the beta chains. But what makes them important is that inside of the proteins, there is this heme group, which is made out of mostly carbon, and some oxygen and hydrogen, and some nitrogen, and this very, very important component, the Fe, which is the iron, because that is where the oxygen is able to attach. So this is where the oxygen actually holds on to the blood so that it can travel from place to place. Now, you might be aware that the heme groups in the red blood cells change color depending on whether oxygen is attached or not. And you've probably considered, oh, hey, my veins are blue and we think of blue as the color of blood without oxygen. That's not actually entirely true. Bright red is definitely the color of blood with oxygen. But without it, so this vial here was bubbled with CO2, so there's no oxygen left. It's still on the very red side because heme groups are red with the iron no matter what. It's just a much darker color of red. However, when the light goes through the skin and reflects off the vessels, that's when it actually looks blue. That's why some of them look a darker blue than others, even when you look at them through your skin. Most likely they are deeper or maybe closer to the surface. I don't actually know the physics. All right, so let's get back to that complete blood count because we are going to use it to understand how the components work and how problems with them can cause disease. So as noted, complete blood count goes through all the different aspects of red blood cells and white blood cells and a platelet count. Let's take a closer look at some of these. So red blood cells or erythrocytes, because erythro is sort of means reddish in Latin. We wanna know how many cells there are, so we're looking at a number, a million of cells. 
how much hemoglobin, the amount of that protein that it's carrying, a number called the hematocrit, which is the percentage of the red blood cells, and the MCV, mean cell volume, which is essentially how big the cells are. So that's all going to tell us important things about red blood cells. The white blood cells, as I noted, we can break down into different types, and you can see the images of these different types. And they have sort of different insides to them if somebody was going to actually do this count and determine. So the lymphocytes are these kind of little ones. The sinophils have this kind of horseshoe. Neutrophils have this oddball shape. And that's how you can tell. And they each have a different standard percentage within your blood, as well as you have a particular amount of them that is normal. You'll notice these are in the thousands. That's far less than the red blood cells. And then you need a particular amount of platelets, which is normally about that number. So we're going to use these numbers to determine what's wrong with various people. So I'm going to leave this up so I can reference it and bring up a copy of the same thing so that we can look at the different patients. So patient one. If the only thing I do is look at the image, I can already tell that there's something weird because it seems far more spaced out than the other one. And there are some really funky looking red blood cells that are not so much donut shaped. So I might look at the red blood cell numbers. So if I go back to the red blood cell numbers, how many are we supposed to have? Well, this is a male. It says they should have at least 4.32 million cells. And this person has, oh, 3.71. So that's low. How about this? They have an HGB of 5.9. Also low, they should have at least 13.5. The hematocrit, we expect to be at least 38.8. It is only 20.9, so that's low. So there's a lot less red blood cells. And the volume, 56.2, is also lower than the 80 that it should be. So not only are there less of them, but they are smaller. White blood cells at 6,000 seem to be about in range. So I'm probably not really going to look that carefully at those. So what's the problem here? Well, if you don't have enough red blood cells, what could happen? Well, red blood cells carry oxygen. And what do you do with oxygen? Well, you use oxygen to allow your cells to make energy. They make energy from the oxygen. So if there's not enough red blood cells, and they don't bring your cells oxygen, your cells can't make energy, which means you are going to feel tired. In fact, there is a disease that specifically relates to red blood cells that makes people tired called anemia. All right, let's look at our next patient. This one is a female. And from the images, the first thing that comes to my mind is, hey, that's a lot more white blood cells than I saw before. So I want to jump to that. What do I see here? Oh, 20,000. Is that higher than it should be? It is almost double the top number that it should be. So that's a good starting point. Now let's see which white blood cells are the problem. Now, you probably don't have to be able to identify the actual cells in any of these images, but I've got the numbers here for you. You can see that neutrophils are at 78%. Well, if I'm looking at that, I'll come over here and say, oh, I mean, there's supposed to be a lot of them, but not quite that many. So that's a lot of neutrophils. Now, these are percentages. So if something goes up, something else is probably going to go down. Lymphocytes are at 10%. That's a little bit low. Monocytes are about fine. So are eosinophils and basophils. So if a slight increase in neutrophils, okay. So what do neutrophils do? Well, they are white blood cells. And I happen to know that they are the white blood cells that are most commonly going after basic invaders and very commonly bacteria. So what would I think? Well, it seems like maybe this person has bacterial infection and those neutrophils are trying to defeat it. That would probably cause me to check this person's blood or somewhere else for bacteria to see what's going on. Let's move on to the next one. It's another female. And it's another situation where it doesn't look too far off, but there are a bunch of white blood cells. And again, that white blood cell number is a little bit on the high side. But the neutrophils, they don't seem very high at all. And in fact, they were supposed to be at least 50% and they're much lower. There are an okay number of lymphocytes at 35. Monocytes are 6%. That seems okay. Sinophils are, wow. What are those? Those are all eosinophils. So what do eosinophils do? Well, they are 
just like neutrophils, accept that instead of preferring to go after bacteria, they activate more under situations including, in some cases, viruses, but most specifically, parasites. So in this case, we're probably looking at another infection, but maybe a parasite, like some kind of worms. All right, we're back to another male patient. And again, I'm gonna start with the image. And the image, well, it's only got the one white blood cell. The red blood cells do seem a little scattered, but huh, I feel like there's something missing from this picture that was in some of the other ones. Like those little tiny blue dots. And sure enough, when I go check the platelet number, it is well below bump, what it should be. So this person seems to have low platelets. Why is that a problem? Well, what do platelets do for you? They help you clot, which means if you cut yourself and you have low platelets, they can't clot. Also, you have no idea how many times a day you bump into something and kind of put a little bit of damage in a blood vessel and the platelets just fill it up and you don't notice. If you don't have enough platelets, people notice and they bruise very easily and can get things like blood blisters. The word that goes along with not having enough platelets is really interesting. It's one of my favorites. It is thrombocytopenia. And the reason it's one of my favorites is because it means exactly what it is. So cyto is cell. Thrombo is clots. So this is the cell that clots. And penia is one of those romance language ways of saying small. So it's a small amount of the cell that clots, thrombocytopenia. One more. All right, if I look at this image, there's all kinds of things wrong here. I mean, I've never seen this many white blood cells, even in the ones before where we were fighting an infection. And in fact, they are very, very high. And specifically in this case, I see lymphocytes as the ones that are above and beyond. But one of the key things here is there's so many of those Something is also happening to the red blood cells. You'll notice the red blood cell number is very, very low. 1.13 should be at least 3.9, along with lowered numbers of HGB and HCT. Although the cell volume is really not that far off. In fact, they might even be a little bit on the fat side. There are platelets that are, let's see, a little low, but mostly in the range that you want. So what's the problem here? Well, it looks like the white blood cells may have overgrown. Is there a disorder that tends to go along with a cell overgrowing? The answer is yes. When cells don't know how to regulate their growth, we typically call it cancer. Cancer cells don't know what they're doing. This could be a stem cell cancer that is producing white blood cells. In fact, it produces so many of them and even the white blood cells are good for you, in this case, they're crowding out the red blood cells, which means that there's still no oxygen getting where it needs to, no energy, and that's a problem. So this could be a leukemia, leuco for leukocyte or white blood cell, or a lymphoma for lymphocytes, and you'd have to do more testing to find that out. But this is what it might look like. Hope you enjoyed checking out those CBCs. As a reminder, this is not a medical class, but it gives you kind of a sense of how it works and a reference to take a look at, but always check out with your doctor before you make any decisions.